Okay, so in this video, we're gonna talk a little bit about VNC, which is uh, virtual network computing. So what, why do we need VNC? Well, VNC can be a wonderful thing because then you can take your laptop, your PC, whatever, and you can have this desktop running on your PC. You can connect to the Pi from your PC. It's kind of nice because if you don't have a monitor that you can dedicate to the Raspberry Pi, that's okay. You can connect up with your computer. Uh, so, so then you have two computers. Then you have two computers yeah. in one. Yeah. All right, so let's have some fun here. We've got the Raspberry Pi here. We have the uh, Windows PC right here. Uh, Raspberry Pi already has the VNC server on it. And what we need is a Windows VNC client. And we can get that by opening up our browser and go to realvnc.com and that will load up and I'm going to click on download select Windows you'll notice that there is also Mac OS Linux Raspberry Pi Solaris is a lot of options so I'm going to download this and while Tom is downloading that um, I I use remote desktop like VNC like solutions all the time um, at work, at home. You can have a machine at a different, in a different location in the building and you don't have to physically go and connect to it. Um, if you ever hear the term headless, um, it means the machine doesn't have a monitor or a head. So you can just have this powered on and as long as you're connected to the same network, which we are right now, both of these machines are connected over Wi-Fi to the same network, we can use VNC to use this machine to control this one. All right. <laughs> Let's go ahead and run this. And this should install VNC on my machine. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and close this so you can see. I've got a little prompt, asks me uh, if I wanna use English as my language. Sure. Next, go ahead and accept the end user license agreement. You're not going to read that first? Yeah, no, that's okay. Probably should. It's not the first time I've installed this though. So I've already, I think, signed away. <laughs> yeah. My it's, already, it's already gone. Yeah. You clicked I agree a long time ago. Yeah. All right. We're getting there. It's installing. It's completed. I'm going to click finish. And let's see here, get started. So while Tom was bringing this up, um, uh, you notice that Tom installed the client on the Windows machine and the server has already been installed on, the, on, on Raspbian, which means that this machine acts as the receiver and also the sender of information. And this is the machine that's being controlled. And the client means this is the machine that does the connecting, right? So we connect from this machine to here and then the keyboard, the mouse movements, the commands that we that we do here are going to get are going to get sent across. So client is here, and server is here. Uh, Real VNC calls it VNC Viewer is is their official name for the client. Just so that you know, make sure you download the appropriate thing. We're running. We're good. Yeah. Anyway, so here it is. You can see from the last time that I connected, this has a different IP address. We need, to, we need to do a few things on the Raspberry Pi before we can actually use VNC. Before we go there, let's go ahead and, uh, well, yeah, let's, let's open up a terminal window. What's a terminal window? Terminal window is basically uh, kind of like the command prompt that you have in Windows. It's a place that you can go um, and directly uh, enter commands uh, that can configure or run programs or whatever right on the Raspberry Pi. We, we can type commands here rather than like pointing and clicking. Um, so you'll see a lot of uh, administrative tasks, especially on Linux, are done through the command prompt. Okay. And so we're going to do uh, sudo, S-U-D-O, super user do, space, and you're going to type in uh, raspi dash config pi dash config like that yep 
Bum, 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 bum. Here's our configuration. And so the first thing we need to do is go down to um, interfacing options, number five. Might be hard to see with some of the big text here. And we want to turn on VNC. So, so go I'm ahead using and hit arrow keys. I'm using the arrow keys to go down here, and then I'm hitting enter to. Um, oh, I need to shrink it. You do. <laughs> okay, let's try this again. Didn't I come in here to resize it? I don't know. Did, okay. I'm, maybe. I want. I want. Uh, I thought you went to one of these. To uh, there we go. Edit. edit. There, there you we go. go. Preferences. All right, we're getting there. So let's do. 18, hopefully. There we go. Okay. So, yes, enable that. And hit OK. We're good. And move down to finish. All right. So, VNC should work now. What did we just do there? Um, VNC, when you use VNC, it allows you to uh, share your computer's screen and control of your computer with other computers. And so by default, that's turned off for security reasons. So you just said, it's fine. <laughs> Opened it up to <laughs> the world. Well, but you have to be on this network. Yeah, yeah. And right now, we're on a private network. Um, the only one that could connect to it right now is this laptop right here. So the next thing we need is the IP address for this computer. So you can do that by typing in ifconfig. And it's going to give you a whole lot of information that you don't really care about. But then down here, under the INET address, you'll see a number most likely on your network. It's going to start with 192.168. And then we'll have some other numbers. Um, in this case, we've got 192.168.43.79. What is, what is an IP address? So the IP address is the location of your computer on the network. It, it's the way that other computers can access your computer. It's like a phone number. It really is. Yeah. OK. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new VNC connection here. It says, enter a VNC address or search. So I'm going to type in 192.168.43.79. How's the and glare? hit enter. Okay. And it says, whoa, this is not recognized. And I'm going to put in a username and password. Now, the default username and password on all Raspberry Pis until you change it, the username is pi, P-I. Got to guess what the password might be? Password? That's a good guess. It's actually Raspberry. Not sure what made them think of that, but. And boom, you will notice right here, I have the same thing. Wait for it. That Matt has over there. Ooh, look at that. Oh. Uh -huh. It's moving it around. OK, I'll let go, because now we're fighting over the, over the mouse. So Tom there just closed the window that was that was visible here from this device. And here's where the exciting part is. Um, am I going to get in trouble if I unplug these? Probably not. Keyboard, mouse, and HDMI connection. So the only thing now that is connected is the power. So you can put this anywhere in your house, and you can still have the full desktop. So uh, we're not, it's, it's not like we're, we're capturing sort of what gets sent to the monitor. We're capturing actually what's, what's going on, on on the machine. And that gets, that gets shown here on the other device. And I have complete control over that machine now. I can uh, browse the internet. I can shut the computer down if I want to. All of that is controlled right here. So VNC, this 
client is acting just like an application would. It's got an X just like a regular application. You can minimize and maximize it. Um, you can close it, and when you close it, you're just cutting off that connection to this machine. And then when you reconnect, you pick up right where you left off. Great tool to use your Raspberry Pi without having all this extra, extra hardware. We just need a power source. But it is super handy when you first set this up, as you saw, to have a keyboard and, and monitor and mouse for the, very, for the very first time. So you can like disconnect it and get it set up, and then once you have it set up, you can just, you can just leave it. Yep. Now that we've connected and we're using the full desktop experience from this Windows machine, we're gonna do two other ways to connect. One is just accessing the file system from the remote machine, and the other one is just uh, executing uh, commands on the terminal window from a remote machine. We'll do that in the next segment.